Hello everyone and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. In this video we're going to be going over async and await. So async and await is essentially how we multi-thread and multi-threading is um, a concept that allows us to run logic on another thread. Now I know you're probably wondering what another thread is. Another thread is essentially um, another pipeline that we can run our code. So everything that we run in a console app right here, if we were to say console dot right line, all of that would be on the main thread, what the user sees. And so if we are running something that takes time, oops, If we're running something that takes time, then we are actually uh, then we would uh, um, freeze up the main thread. So this would be frozen, and there wouldn't be anything you can do, which is not uh, the best user experience. So what um, what we have available to us is async and await. So let's go ahead and jump into an actual example. Let's say we're playing a game and the user um, has to wait for um, some food to be made. All right, so let's go ahead and make a function. We'll just call this public void make food. All right, and then we can say string food item. All right. Then we can say console dot right line. Um, pre preparing food item. All right. And then console dot right line. Let's do dollar sign. Um, and then food item is ready. Oops. All right. Food item is ready. All right. So um, this function is going to make some food. However, um, typically it would take a second for the food to be ready. So we need to make that a little bit more realistic because if we call this function, we'll see that it actually um, it goes very fast. So we can say new program, and then we can just simply call program dot make food steak. All right, so we're gonna make some steak, and let's see how our computer makes steak. All right, great. So you saw how fast that was. Um, we want to wait. What if we wanted to wait five seconds? So we can use this handy dandy little method called task delay. All right, and then we can simply put five seconds here. All right, this is 5,000 milliseconds. So, um, but if we run that, let's take a look. And see what would happen. And it didn't change anything, even though we specifically said to wait five seconds. So why is that? Well, it's again, it's running on the main thread, and so it essentially just skipped over it. So we have to essentially tell it to wait. So after it's finished firing through this, it needs to um, actually say, hey, we, uh, we're doing more things after this. So, or we need to actually hit this and wait for it and then we can finish. So, what we need to do is, well, we're just going to await it. All right, so we're going to await this method. So if we're going to wait for it, um, it says that the wait operator can only be used within an async method. All right, great. So we can make this a sync, all right. Now it returns void. So what's this? It says asynchronous method make food should not return void. Well, 
fortunately, um, we uh, we um, know that void uh, can't really return anything. So we have to specify that a task is happening here. And this task is a an asynchronous task. And so we can specify that specifically with the system threading tasks and tasks task um, um, object or class. Okay? So this task is essentially saying that there is um, some background stuff going on. There's a task, a background task, if you will, happening. All right, so let's run this now. Let's see what happens. All right, um, let's go ahead and do that one more time. It said, it did say preparing steak though. So let's see this in action. There we go. So preparing steak, and then it hit this, and then it still waited. But when it fired in this scope, it essentially ran through this, created the program, ran through this, and then ended. So we need to say in this scope, hey, you need to wait for this method because um, there's some asynchronous programming going on in here. There's some... Um, there's some delay here that you need to wait for. So it even says, because this call is not awaited, execution of the current method continues before the call is completed. Consider applying the await operator to the result of the call. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we can say await. Now if we do that, it'll give us an error. It says the await operator can only be used within an async method. Consider marking this method with the async modifier and changing its return type to task. All right, there we go. So we essentially need, whenever we have a await inside of a method, we have to use async. It doesn't always have to be um, void. It doesn't always have to be task, um, but um, it certainly helps and it is certainly preferred. All right, so now we know that main is doing some asynchronous programming because of the test keyword. Well, and of course the async keyword as well. Um, and we have our call right here. It is awaiting and finishing, and it is waiting till this program, or excuse me, this method is finished. And then we're going to wait until this is finished as well. So let's go ahead and run that and see what it does. All right, it's preparing the steak. One, two, three, four, five, and there it is. Steak is ready. All right, so that is essentially how to use async and await. So whenever we want to do something that um, essentially will take um, some time or we want to um, essentially wait until we have uh, data coming back. So again, this is very, very common. Um, with uh, web services and getting information from the internet because we have to wait until it's finished loading and until we actually have that data. Um, so a lot of times if you didn't actually implement this and you tried getting something from the internet, it would skip right over it and it would always return null or empty or there wouldn't be anything um, because we didn't wait for it to finish. So. This will come in very handy, and you will see this a lot, this async, await, and task in, um, in many programs, in most, to be completely honest. And we're actually going to jump into um, consuming web services in the next few videos. So I look forward to seeing you in that one.